So our learning outcomes for today are essentially to be able to describe and explain the apparent motions of different celestial objects as seen from Earth. So what I mean by that is how do the stars move in our sky? How do the planets move and how does the sun and moon move? So you should be able to describe not only um, how those objects appear to move from our vantage point, but also why they appear to move that way. Um, okay, and then the second is to, um, we're gonna talk about the geocentric and the heliocentric models for how objects in the solar system move. Um, so that's Ptolemy's geocentric model and Copernicus's heliocentric model. And we'll talk about which evidence supported each model and what tilted the balance of evidence in favor of heliocentrism. All right, so um, starting out with what do we see in the sky when we look up? Um, this is a question that we've been asking as humans forever. Um, so there's a lot of um, astronomy and many other cultures that looks at things like the, uh, developing the calendars. So Mayan astronomers in particular had a calendar that was based on the planet Venus instead of a calendar that was based on um, the sun, as most other cultures used, which I think is pretty interesting. And um, uh, you might know about Stonehenge in Britain, and there's many other examples of um, indigenous peoples from all over the world who built uh, structures that tracked either the sun or specific stars as they you know, rose and set in the sky at specific times of year. And this would have been really important to ancient people because they, those cycles that we see in the sky are also linked to cycles that we see on earth, right? And so they're useful for telling us when to plant, when to harvest. Um, and so you can, you can basically think of it as a you know, completely celestial based uh, calendar uh, for most cultures around the world. So some of these topics you might choose to explore in your first um, portfolio assignment, looking at astronomy in many cultures and um, some of the amazing things that uh, people around the world developed in the ancient world. Okay, so also people used to tell stories about the sky because the stars were so influential on daily life. Um, it seemed natural to, you know, assign mythological figures to some of the shapes of stars that we see. So all of the constellations are different in many cultures. Um, and the ones that you're familiar with are probably from the Greek world. Um, but there, I mean, many cultures had their own constellations and it can be pretty interesting to look, go look at, you know, specific groups of stars and see how different people saw them. And these days we still do use constellations to find our way around the sky. So, um, you know, I'm familiar with some of the um, constellations not all of them by any means, um, but they're useful to get around and find other interesting objects like galaxies. Um, and it's fun to watch the planets move through uh, areas of different constellations. And even in the science of astronomy today, constellations are still used to map out the sky, but it's more like um, states. So each constellation is essentially like a, a, a region of the sky where you can identify specific things. So for example, the Orion Nebula is a huge gas cloud um, that is busy giving birth to many stars and that is located within the Orion constellation. So when we say that something is in a certain constellation, what we mean is that it's in this patch of sky where that constellation is located. Um, there's 88 official constellations that are now defined. All right, so another poll question um, here you can see the, the constellations kind of, you know, leaving out a trail of stars. And I don't know if any of you have ever taken one of those long exposure images at night, but if you do, then the, the stars also appear to leave behind a streak in the sky. And you'll notice that they are all in concentric circles. Um, and so this is an example taken in Hilo, Hawaii. And you can see, you know, they're centered on one particular point. And this is a, a really important feature of our celestial sphere. So just take a minute and think about, think to yourself, which, what object is at the center of those circles? 